Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know the score by now, I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well today we're looking at a lens and we're looking at the Siriu 50mm f1.8 anamorphic lens. And I'll explain to you what anamorphic is. Well, I'm going to try to explain to you what anamorphic is because it's really complex. Uh, it's even complex to me. Now, there are going to be a lot of you that understand anamorphic, probably even use anamorphic lenses, and are probably a lot more familiar to it uh, than what I am. Uh, I'm still learning, so you have to forgive me if I don't get all the information completely right. But I've got a, a, a pretty reasonable understanding of, you know, how it works and what it does. What you're looking at now is the image coming off my Fuji X-S10, filmed anamorphically. And what it does uh, in principle, it's a 1.33 times squeeze factor. So if you look at the front element of a lens, you can see it's a kind of a 4.3 uh, aspect ratio. What it does effectively, it squeezes in the image uh, by about 30%. So it's a 1.33 times squeeze on a 16 by 9 sensor. Because the sensor of a Fuji camera, as with virtually all of them, is 16 by 9. So it's a 1.33 times squeeze factor. So it's 30% basically. So because it's squeezing it in, you're getting more kind of headroom to some extent. It's showing more of the image. But once it's de-squeezed, you've got about 30% more image. And it gives a beautiful aesthetic. Now, you can cheat a cinemascope look by uh, putting black bars on your uh, footage, which when you look at the footage coming off my A7C, that's effectively uh, what it's done. An anamorphic lens has two characteristics that ordinary lenses don't have. Um, and one of them is light streaks. And you've seen this on many, many films, certainly sci-fi films, where you get a, a pinkish... Um, sort of mauve uh, light streak that goes across any highlights, uh, particularly a street light, um, a torch or whatever that might be. And it looks beautiful. It looks really, really good. Um, and another uh, another character, character, ca characteristic of an anamorphic lens is its bokeh. It's not circular bokeh that you would see on an aspherical lens, uh, such as on all your Canons, Sonys, Nikons, whatever. Um, it'd be an oval bokeh. Because the image is being compressed in, you have that lovely oval bokeh, which you find in cinemas. And that's how, you know, uh, that's why they use, well, that's another reason why they use anamorphic lenses uh, in cinema. Um, so basically, it squeezes the image when you film it, uh, and then you de-squeeze it when you edit it. And there's a whole load of calculations you have to go through to get the de-squeeze right, for it to look right. Um, you can always tell if you haven't de-squeezed it correctly by filming a circle. It could be a clock or something. And you can see it's not perfectly circle if you haven't de-squeezed it to the correct aspect ratio. Um, there is an online calculator, which I'll put in the description below, of how you actually do it and what, what the mathematics are to get that de-squeeze looking right. Um, and once you've got that right, you, you know, you're laughing. It's, it's wicked. Um, now this lens is manual focus. I'm not the best at manual focusing because of, you know I haven't got the best of eyesight. Um, but I'm looking at it with my uh, Atomos Ninja 5 and I can see pretty much that I am in focus. Well, I hope I can, I've got focus peaking turned on so it does look like I'm in focus. This is, this is great filming like this, but if you're not using an external monitor, it's helpful to have a camera that de-squeezes it as a preview, not de-squeezes it in camera, but actually on the monitor so you can actually see a de-squeezed image. Because uh, what I'm looking at on my Fuji X-S10 monitor is a very squeezed image and it's a bit disorientating after a period of time. You can get, you can get used to it, but it is a bit disorientating. At least on my uh, Atomos Ninja 5, it's got a de-squeeze mode, so I'm actually looking at a de-squeezed image, which is great. And as I look up at it, I can see that um, you know I'm looking pretty normal. Well, you know, as normal as I can look. Um, but not essential, but certainly helpful. I'm actually recording it on my Ninja 5 as well, so I've got a choice of which I use. Do I take the footage off the Fuji X-S10 or do I take the footage off my Ninja 5? Albeit it's a 422 10-bit signal coming out of the Fuji, so I may well use the Ninja 5 footage. 
There's also ProRes footage, so it works great with my, um, you know, with my Mac. So that's basically, you know, uh, basically the lens. Um, as I say, I will um, uh, put a description uh, below as to where you can buy the lens from. Uh, I actually got it off eBay, but you can get it through Amazon. There will be an Amazon affiliate link. Um, I mean, it's only worth getting, I think, if you are into, or you're looking at seriously getting into cinematography. Um, I think that it's well worth it. This lens is designed for the 16x9 uh, cameras, such as all the ones that we all buy. Um, but what Sirio have done, and I think they've done a brilliant thing here, is that they've designed a lens to cater for the, you know, the vast majority of cameras out there that don't have an anamorphic mode. And so that's why this is a 1.33 times crop factor. But this is the very first video I've uploaded, or will be uploading, in uh, 4K. Um, the very first video that I've ever done anamorphically. The sound, hopefully, is coming from my uh, uh microphone my uh, sennheiser mke 600 that's uh xlr microphone uh, that requires phantom power i'm feeding it straight into me fuji via a saramonic um adapter and i'll put a link to that in the description below as well um, that can take two microphones i'm playing with that and all that's a uh, should be a great piece of kit I've got a backup with my Saramonic radio mic going into me Sony. Um, that's a backup just in case this microphone fails. You know, this video is as much as an experiment for me as it is for you guys and girls to see what this anamorphic lens can do. Now, I don't know if I can highly recommend this lens or not yet because A, I've not done enough with it. Um, and, you know, I've got to understand it more. Uh, but I just wanted to get this video out to give you my introduction to the fact that I am playing with anamorphic lenses. Uh, always wanted to, wanted to for a long time. Um, was always scared to, thinking it's far too complicated. Um, but, you know, it's like anything really. Once you get your head around it, and it does, it is a, a, a right um, a head mess. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm getting my head around it. So there we go. That's the Siriu uh 50 mil f 1.8 anamorphic lens now it is a lovely made lens it's beautifully made it's good quality um i believe it's chinese uh, i wouldn't complete you know completely swear to that i do believe it's chinese but the price point uh for an anamorphic lens is phenomenal i mean it's 600 quid well 597 quid here in the uk at this moment in time january of 2021 and i do believe Siriu are making some other focal lengths. I believe they have already released a 35mm one and a 24mm. If I really enjoy using this, I wouldn't get the 35 because I think that's far too close to the 50. But I'd certainly be interested in the 24mm and fit that on my Sony or Vita. I might get the Sony E-mount version um, because I do like the widescreen sort of cinemascope look. Um, I really do like that. Uh, so there we go. It's it's all you know, uh, good experimentation. So there we go. My first 4K video to be uploaded with um, you know in widescreen format. Um, maybe I'll be able to get into making movies. <laughs> oh dear, I don't think so. Um, so there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this content useful and not too confusing because I'm still confused, but um, I'm getting there. But I hope you found it useful and hope you enjoyed looking at this, you know, a Cinemascope, um, you know, the AVP Studios Cinemascope um, uh, version. Um, so there we go. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate that. It helps the algorithms, the YouTube algorithms. It helps me grow the channel. And it so, means so much to me. And I do work really hard on these videos. Uh, this is about the fifth attempt I've made on this one because I couldn't get my head around describing you know, how anamorphic works. Um, and I'm not even sure I've you know successfully done that. So I, again, I've apologised before, but I apologise again. If I haven't got my head around it, don't take me as, a, as an example of expertise in this particular field uh, because I'm no expert in this field whatsoever um, so there we go thanks again for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already done so and hit the like button if you like the content of this video there's more to come so stay tuned for them thanks very much speak to you soon bye